Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah that until today we can still have a good life and we are healthy and inshallah that we can live our life to the best we have as a human being on earth. This time I'm going to share with, uh, with you a little bit of information about how to read the Arabic letters. Although I don't speak Arabic in daily basis, because as you might already know that I'm not uh, Arabs, I don't live in Saudi Arabia and I do not stay in Mecca. So I would like to share with you a little bit of understanding that I have as a, as a born uh, Muslim in Indonesia. So for those of you who are new to Islam and becoming Muslims for you, is a little bit of new things happening in your life. So I hope that what I'm going to share with you in this video is going to be useful for you when you read the Quran, okay? Yeah. I'd like to share with you a little bit of understanding about a few examples of the Arabic letters. Uh, we start from here, okay. The Arabic letters consist of a few words. As you can see, this is the form of the Arabic letters. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So there are 28 Arabic letters. Uh, we start from here. The way the writing system is organized in Arabic is different with the one that the American or Western have. Usually the, the Latin uh, letters start from left to the right, but the Arabic letters are started from the right to the left. So we start from here. And this one is called Alif, Ba, Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha. So the way how you pronounce it with the Tha, when you put your tongue into your, the upper teeth in your mouth, Tha, uh, Jim, Ha, Kha, um, we repeat, Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kha, Da, Zal, Ra, Zai, Sin, Shin, Sad, Da, Ta, Za, Ain. So this one is known as Ain. So you, you touch your uh, here, vocal cord right over here. Ah, ain, rain, fa, fa is the open air uh, coming through your mouth. Fa, cough here, cough is right here in, in your throat. Cough, ka, ka, ka is a simple one. Ka with a ka, ka, lam, amim, nun, ha. Ha. So this is a little bit different with the, with the one that we have here. Although this one is, is also called and pronounced ha, but this one is ha. The, the sound is a little bit stressed, ha. Um, there is another form of this one, but I will show you later on for this. Ha, and this one is wow, wow, wah, wah. So with the W, wah, and this one is ya. Yeah. So there are 28 Arabic letters that we might need to know if we would like to read the Quran. At the very least, although you don't speak the Arabic, but at least you can read the Quran. It's, it's a, another enjoyment. It, it is very helpful for you when you recite the surah or ayat when you do Islamic daily prayers for five times a day. So Bu, Zuhur, Asar, Maghrib, and Isha. So I repeat again. You may repeat after me. Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kho, Da, Za, Ro, Zai, Sin, Sin, Shin, Shin, Sot, Do, To, Za, Ain, Rain, Fa, Kof, Kaf, Lam, Mim, Nun, Ha, wa, ya. Okay, good. Now that sounds perfect. 
after you recognize all these Arabic letters, now we would like to start understanding the signs of reading. As you might already notice in the Quran, that the form of the Arabic letters might be changing depending on, depending on how the circumstances of the word appear in the Quran. Sometimes the Arabic letters have longer vowels and uh, the longest vowel, usually I will sign it with two knots, not two knots and six knots. There will be a longer one like that. Now we start here, you see, um, this one, I take it from Gampang Belajar Bahasa Arab dot files dot WordPress. It was published in 2015. So this is the way how you pronounce the Arabic letters. You see, this one is the uh, in the upper part of the word. Uh, we call it uh, kafa, yeah. And then this one is um, let's see, fat fatha. Uh, this one is known as fatha. Um, is atas. This is the upper part, in the upper part of the Arabic letters, and below the word that is called as kasra. So imagine that this line is the Arabic letters, and you will find this sign. It means that it is fatta, and below the Arabic letters that is known as kasra. And if you find this kind of symbol small wa, small wow like this. This one is called as Dhamma. It's a baris depan, Dhamma. Uh, and the, the pronounced is U. Uh, while Fata, if you pronounce Fata, it is pronounced A. And Kasra is E, and Dhamma is U. Now, if you find double, double Fata, that is called as An, An. Yeah, and uh, the Arabic letters recognize this as uh, tanwin. It's a double lines in the upper part or in the uh, below the Arabic letters and then in the upper part of the Arabic letters, whether it is uh, double fata, double kasra, or double jama. So this one is an, in, un. Okay, now this is the very basic that you need to know before you uh, read the Quran further. Now this one is known as Tashdid or Shadda. Mm, tashdid or Shadda, this is, the, this is the sign. Tashdid or Shadda. And the way how you read this is with, with a double consonant. Uh, for example, like toddler um, and then um, Paddle. So you, you you have double consonant when you read these kinds of Arabic letters. Mm, and then the other one is this one. This is a small uh, kind of um, ball or dot. And this is white area in the middle of that. This one is known as sukun. Sukun means is the sign of off, the sign of off. <laughs> you do not pronounce the word, although Mm, it, it means that you skip it. Mm, yeah? you, you skip the word. Uh, that it, it, it adds up more vowels to the letters before it. Now that is called sukun. So I repeat, we have fata, kasra, dhamma, tadwin, like this one, tashdit, and sukun. Now that is the basic letters that uh, you need to know when you uh, want to read the Quran. Uh, we, we must move further to see um, this one, uh, the other form, okay? Now, this is the clearer form, is patha, we call it fatha, kasra, and dhamma. And the upper part, double fatha, with the two lines, is called a fatahtain, fatahtain, uh, well, the double fata is just my term. You don't have to follow that. You can call it fatahtain, kasratain, and dhammahtain. So it's un, in, an. And this one is a, i, u. Well, this one is tashdit. It means that you um, double the consonant um, for, two, for two knots. And then this one is sukun. It means it is just off, or, or you can say the letters are dead like that. So we we don't we don't read that aloud when you find this kind of symbols. And uh, when you read the Quran, you need to understand that these signs are used 
as a pause, stop, and everything. I take it from on internet, and I think this is no license for that. Um, so if you find this kind of symbol, it means that you may not stop. This is the. Uh, it means that you do not have to stop right here. But if you find this one uh, with a char long like this one, it means that it is better for you to move on when you read the text, when you read the Quran. And uh, it means that you may stop or you may continue to read the letters, the next letters of the word. And this one, you need to stop between between the two. Um, you either you want to stop for the first sign or you have to stop the second sign. I'll show you in the Abakara, we have this a kind of symbols. And if you find mim, mim, this one, it means that you have to stop. So it is it is better for you to stop reading it. This one, this is uh, better if you stop, will be better if you stop. Uh, so this cough like this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six signs when you have when you find these six signs or symbols, then you need to follow how to read the Quran. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six signs of reading the Quran and 28 Arabic letters, it's the simple one. Before we begin to see how to read the Quran, let me open you another file that I take it from um, my book. So this is this the source. Mm -hmm. Okay, now as you can see, this is the transliteration of the Arabic to Latin. Actually, I took it from this. This is the small Quran. I scan it by myself so that it is being useful for everyone who would like to read about this. Um, it this this Quran was published by Ministry of Religious Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. I bought it. Um, I think I, I think I was I bought this in 2000 and 2014, I suppose. Very long, but I still love this Quran. Very neat. Now let me share with you uh, this uh, letters, the guidelines of the. Arabic and Latin translate transliteration. Keputusan bersama Menteri Agama. So it means that this is the based on the letters of agreement between Ministry of Religious Affairs and Ministry of Education and Culture, 1987 number zero five four three BU 1987. So it's both. Now the first one is we have consonant. Consonant means this letters that do not have sound. Well, if you learn linguistics, I suppose that you already understand what does it mean with a consonant. We have 29. So here it was 10, 29. Oh yeah, this is Hamza. The, the previous one that I showed you didn't have Hamza. Um, the first one is Alif. So it has no symbol for that. Alif, is this, this is Alif. And this is b, b, d, s, j, h, and then this one is kh. The seventh Arabic word is known as. Um, let me make it bigger for you to read. Okay, all right. This one. This one t, th, th, t with s in your teeth. Th, j, h, uh, kh, uh, D, Z, R, Z. So this one, Z. This one is Z with D, Z uh, of these letters. And this one is Z, Z. Uh, for example, like Zorro, Zorro, uh, Rat. And then this one is uh, Bizarre, something like that, the word Bizarre. D, Donut. Uh, for example, um, the word in English is uh, uh, choir, 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 and uh, this one is ha, um, hosan, or the other word is uh, hasan, for example, like that. Now we have here s, this is a simple one. S, this is like sin, uh, sad, uh, sad, sing. So this is 
as simple as. We have another one is sh s with y sh sh and this one sh. Actually, this is followed by a. It, is, uh, it becomes sh. And we have here the 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 ein ein rein a of ka la mim nun wow w n m l g q. This one is q f and this one is g. Actually, with with h after that we call it r. Uh, meanwhile, this one is with a. Ein, ein. So it, it's completely different with you speaking English. Ein, the, mm, we have nun, wa, ah, hamza, and then we have uh, y. This one is actually ya, ya. But in English, you have to say y for the word uh, y. Uh, but in Arabic, you call it uh, ya. So these are the consonants. We have 29 consonants in the Arabic letters before you read the Quran. According to this uh, Quran, we have a short vocal, this one, with, still remember, kasra? Uh, kataba. So this is ka ta ba. Remember, ka, ka means from this one, ka, ka, and then we have the means right here, see double dot in the upper part of the Arabic letters, uh, and b. So they call it kataba. So this is short vocal, kataba. And the other form is suila. This is uh, the below one, what do we call it? Kastra, fatta, dhamma, right? So this one is fatta. And they call it suila. So it's right here. This is Dhamma, Fata, Kasra, Suila. So this is very short, Suila. Now we have this one, Dhamma, Yez Habu, Yez Habu. So if you find this kind of symbol here, so it means that this is off. You don't have, you don't give vowel to the letter. So it becomes Yez, Yez Habu. So this one is Dhamma. Yes, habu, su ila, kataba. Okay. Now this one is the short vocal. What about long vocal? So we have short vocal. We have long vocal. Long vocal we have uh, with uh, fatta, a. Uh, yeah. If if a letter, an Arabic letter, is followed by this kind of symbol, it means it's a bit long, uh, like this one. Uh, the word ka. Kaf, you know, remember like this one? Mm. E, this one, Kaf. So it is followed by Alif. So it becomes Ko, Kola, Kola. So it's Kola, Kola. So the, when, you, when you read the Arabic letters with this uh, Fatta or Alif like this one, it adds two vowels in it. Kola, Kola. I don't talk about the rhythm in the, the written Quran yet, but I emphasize on the vocal, the long and the short and how the longest vocals are. Vowels mean. Okay, now we have another one is with, if it is um, fatta, it should be followed by alif, like this one, la. And it, if it has e, you know, fatta, and it is followed by uh, the of yeah, so e it becomes qila, 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 and this one is qola, qola, qila. So that that's the way how you pronounce that. And dhamma is supposed to be followed by the of wah, yeah, of wah. So it becomes u, u. Uh, it you can see this in here. Yaqulu. So it's uh, it adds two vowels in here. Ooh. So ya, ya ku. So ya is short. Ya ku. So ku with uh, double vowels and lu short. Ya kulu. So that's the way how you read this kinds of long vowel.
well, we so far we have short vocal and long uh, vocal. Ola qila yaqulu. For example, like that one. Now imagine if we have this ba, ba, ba la. Yeah, they're supposed to be like that. Or you can find na, na, like this one. Uh, nun, nun, we call that nun, nun. So it becomes na la, um, or below. If it is below, ni, ni la, or Yanulu. Well, actually, that's not the Arabic uh, Arabic words, but I just made it up. Now, kola, kila, yakulu. That's the way how you uh, read the Arabic letters with long vocal. Now we move on to the next one. It's a diphthong. Diphthong means like this: I, I, a, uh, and with of here. Yeah? If, for example, kaifa. Kaifa. So you don't you don't read it kifa. No, it's kaifa. Kuifa. Yeah, we have that. No, kui. We don't have ui. We actually i and ao. Kaifa and then ao ao as it is in haula. Ao haula. So those are the examples of uh, the vocals and the Arabic letters. Okay. Now, let me show you how to read that in the very basic, not very basic, but in the Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, surah Al-Fatiha is the most important surah in the Quran. It is located in the beginning of the Quran. So if you, um, let me stop share here. Now, if you read the Quran, this is the Quran. Actually, you don't read it from the left but actually you read from the right, from here, and then you open it, you will find the first surah, it's uh, this one, the Quran, and right in here, this one is known as the uh, Al-Fatiha. Right after Al-Fatiha, it is followed by Al-Baqarah, it's right here. Uh, Okay. Now, this is the printed form of the Quran. There are many uh, forms of the printed uh, Quran. You can find it in the Indonesian translation or English translation, even in your country. You can find that, or you can go online. Now, let me show you the online version. Mm, I'd like to share it right here. Uh, we come back to the uh, Google Chrome. Now, the online Quran, I I share it from here. Quran.com. You can actually find it in the uh, online version. It is available for everyone across the world to read this. Quran.com. For example, we start from. So see, you find you read this. The first surah is known as Al Fatiha, and then it is followed by Al Baqarah. Al Fatiha means the opening opening of the uh, Quran. So um, some people call it that uh, it's not the mother or but but the, the most important surah in the Quran. Let me click this. Okay. All right. Okay. Now this is the way how you will see the Quran. Okay. The Al Fatiha. Mm -hmm. So the translation is um, All praises for Allah, Lord of the world. Um, is it small for you? Can we make it bigger? Let me try. Okay, good. Okay, all right. Now that's better for, for us to read that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we start from here one first. Oh, that's the 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 uh, the, in, the English. Let me try to change that into English. English. Okay, now that's better. Okay. Now we start from here. When you read the Quran, you need to start with Tawus. Tawus actually means 
It means that you seek for protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the whispers of the evil or from the shayateen or shaitan. Shaitan means simple in English means evil or um, or iblis or, or demonic or everything like that's the bad and ugly one. Okay, So we seek for protection from those kinds of things although they were created by Allah himself. Now, we start from here. After you say ta'awuz, you should say uh, basmallah, like this one. This, see, this is ba, and this is of as, bismi, bismil. So this is tajweet, uh, tasdit, tasdit, and ha, uh, ra, of uh, ha, mim, nun, uh, ra and then ha again. This is one of ya and uh, with mim. Oh, I think I don't see, I don't see the off signs right here. Oh, we will try to find the off signs for you. So we hope that it is very useful. We start from here. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So that's the way how you read that. We start from b and then this is off. S, bis. So you you don't you don't you don't say it bis bisu bisa bisi. No, it's bis. Just the consonant. Bismi. So we we jump. Bismi, and then it is followed directly by double L or tasdit. Bismillah. And remember, this is fatah. Uh, fatah. It is only short, short vocal, short vowel. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. If you if you have this kind of signs, it means you can make it a little bit longer, but not too long. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So depending on how you read that, depending on the circumstances, you may make it long, or you just uh, read it. In it slowly, but make sure that you follow the uh, tajweed. E see, uh, double. Okay. Um, the next one. Okay. This is the first ayat in Al Fatiha. Uh, Bismillah. What does it mean? In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. So, every Muslims in the world start their activity in life from. From early in the morning and the dawn, when they do hajjah prayer, and then go to bed, then wake up again in the morning, go to the bathroom to do super prayer, go to the masjid. Everything, every deed they do should be started with the bismillah. So it, it means that uh, Muslims seek for uh, pleasure, no, no, seek for forgiving, forgiveness and seek for. Um, in the simple word, we call that a blessing, blessing yeah, from uh, from Allah. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. That's that's what it means. In the translation of this Bismillah Rahman right? Now we follow the next ayat. The first ayat in Al Fatiha is this one. Excuse me. Al. So the first the first letter is A, followed by the of L, and then um, of Mim. And we have of L again, so and then of uh, yeah. Alham, Alhamdulillahi Rabb, Rabbil Alamin. So the way how you uh, pronounce that is uh, see, this is that bit. No, I did here, so you you uh, pronounce it double. Alhamd, Alhamdulillahi Rabb. So that's the way how you read, read that. It means that all praise is for Allah, Lord of all world. So imagine this is this is so exciting. This is so great. You you praise the only one God of the world and Lord of the world. Can you imagine that how magnificent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so how how great uh, his power is and he rule every kinds of uh, world but you may not imagine though Allah is not like what you think of in the uh, Hollywood movies superpowers like that no it's not like that it's beyond you can imagine 
beyond like that, right? So we just tiny little dots in this universe compared to his powers, we're nothing. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And then followed by, see, another, another uh, tashdid here. Ar-Rahmani Rahim. Okay, so you call it double like that. Mm, and then this one. Ma, so it is started with mim, uh, mim, ma. But actually, this is short form. But if you find this uh, kind of symbol, it means that you can make it a little bit longer with two knots, with the two knots like that. Uh, I, I like to have it um, not. Um, I'm reading this book actually. <laughs> so like this one. Oh, double, yeah. If you if you find like music, ma ma. We can, uh, you have, uh, you, you may use a lower voice or higher voice, depending on the circumstances of the, your prayer. So this is double. Double, okay. Now this, this translation is master of the day of judgment. So the day of judgment is, wow, this is great. Everything you do in life will be judged in the in the day of judgment I, when every human beings every creators even angels are already dead and passed away that's the, that will be the time when the day of judgment comes and that day comes you will feel sorry to yourself if you did completely bad throughout your lives before your death and then uh, the next ayah is the fifth ayah in al fatiha is this one yeah so this is double and you find this is Alif. Yeah, this is double again. So the Ayn is off. So you don't pronounce that. You don't have to say I or I, even now, but now, just the, the consonant. So that's the way how you read it, okay? Um, so this is Dhamma, Budu. Dhamma is never located below the Arabic letters, never. It is always in the upper part of the Arabic letters. Dhamma, Fatah, and this one is Kasra, I. Hmm. The meaning or the translation of that into English is you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. So it's, um, to me, this is direct connection between you and your God only without anything between, between us. So if you, for example, if you love someone, um, you like someone, it's only between you and that person. There's no other things between us. So imagine if you worship God and then you pray to him, you feel really close to him. This is only between you and him. Even though you do jama'ah with your friends or with your imam, but still it's it's only between you and, and Allah. It's this one. You alone we worship. We worship means that all human beings, including you, if you're Muslim, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. So that's uh, this is translated by Dr. Mustafa Khattab, the clear Quran. Okay, yeah. So be careful if you pronounce this. This is So yeah has two vowels, a bit long compared to uh, short. Yeah. Okay. Now, the next one is this ha ha na. Uh, that's it, this one and ra, ta, uh, of l, mim, sin, ta, of, ya, and mim. So that's the different form, but still you pronounce it the same. E, di, na, si. If you find this one uh, with alif, actually this is long, okay. You, you, you read it in a long vowel. Actually, Idina, Idina, Siro. No. But in the Tajwid rules, Tajwid, Tajwid is the knowledge of reading the Quran. 
Um, this one can be shortened and it jumps directly into the uh, Arabic letters with the tashtid. Ihdinash, so it becomes like that. Ihdinash See, this is a bit long, two vowels. Musta, mustaqim. So you, you may not say mustaqim. No, it's completely wrong. It's the, the letters here is actually ta, not ta. Okay. I repeat. Okay. Guide us along the straight path. So that this is what it means. Guide us along the straight path means that you pray to God, you pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to praying everyone, to, uh, your brothers and your sisters, your family, your neighbors, even your country and your nation, your people, to the straight path. Straight path means that. The path of life is that directly to submit your life to God, to God only, to himself, that you don't worship anything. If you worship anything else, you may give your soul, whatever, and then what do you have in return? It's nothing. If you only find wealthy in lives, well, basically you're going to be dead. And what is the point if you're wealthy? Your wealth will go to somebody else who's still alive. <laughs> you're already rotten. You're already dead. Um, so that's that's the way how you see this is one guide us to the path stride so stride path so the next one the last ayah in our fatiha is this one see uh, let me read it for you this is this is one that will be interesting right at this point e See, that's the way how you read this uh, kind of ayah. Mm. The translation is the path of those you have blessed, not those you are displeased with, or those who are astray. See, um, the meaning of astray right at this point is, um, so um, the meaning go astray means that you, you forgot about God, you live your life only by yourself, and you think everything is going to be solved with money, things like that, okay? With that, if you, you abandon God, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you think that this earth, this the moon, the universe belongs to you. <laughs> so that's completely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, I read it again. Siro, see? So, Siro to Levi, Levi, and I'm. See, this is very interesting. This is exciting about how you it shows the translation. The path of those. You have bestowed your favors on them, not off to those who earn your wrath. Wrath means anger, okay? On themselves uh, and not uh, of those who go astray. Isn't that interesting? Let me read it together, okay? This is Tashdid, double yeah. See, look at the signs, uh, the Fatah, Kasrah, Dhamma, and then Sukun. And this one, so uh, the different one is that if you find these kinds of uh, symbols, it means very long. It's six actually, six not. Okay. Wala wala doli. So that's the way how you read that. Okay. Now, let me read it from the beginning, from this uh, the last ayah in Surat Al Fatiha. The Rota Lavina and Amta Alehim Royal Mardubi Alehim Walandoli. Now, um, actually, I'm not the I'm not the Kira or 
student who learns completely about Arabic Quran now. I'm ordinary Muslim, but I read the Quran as part of my obligation to Allah. Mm, as a Muslim, we need to read the Quran and understand the meaning. Okay, now that's the way how you read that. Now we have started to learn the Arabic letters and how to read that. We have Fatah, Kasrah, Dhamma, and then we have um, how to read the Arabic letters. Let me... Um, Oh, I have another one, the Quran apps. I will stop share here first. I will share you another one. Okay, we have here. Um, okay, I don't think there's a, oh, this is whiteboard. Mm -hmm. No, I just use this one. It's that application cannot be open, unfortunately. Okay, now I make it small again. Okay, one. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay, now let me read it for you, uh, the Arabic uh, letters of this Surat Al-Fatiha. A'udhu Billahi Minash Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Arrahmanirrahim. Maniki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in Ihdina siratal mustaqim Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim Amin. So that's the way how you read the Al-Fatiha in the in Al-Quran. So when you, read, when you learn to read the Quran, you need to read it over and over and over again. It has uh, so many surah in the uh, Quran. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you, this is the opener. So let me show you how many uh, surah that a Quran has. A Quran has, uh, wow, so many, 100, and 40, 114 surah. The last one is Anas. The first, the first surah in the Quran is this one, uh, Al Fatiha, and the second one is Al Baqarah. So uh, Al Baqarah, the first one, you can find it right over here. Mm. This is the second surah, Al Baqarah. It's being opened. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this one. This. Bismil. So this, uh, even though you see the Arabic calligraphy, but still the way how to read it is the same. Uh, the one with this uh, below the Arabic letters is uh, uh, Kasra, and Kasra, Kasra, and this is Fatah, and then uh, we have uh, no. There's no Dhamma here. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. If you Qari. Um, Qari means a student who learns to read the Quran with a certain rhythm. Then you will learn how to read it in a certain way. But I, I'm not going to show you about them because I'm not the perfect teacher for that. But I just show you the simple and basic one that everyone can learn. Mm -hmm. So this one, the we have here. Okay, um, let me show you. Okay, this one. See, if you find this kinds of symbol, it means a very long. Uh, 
uh, more more than uh, it's around six knock six uh, vowels. Alif lam So this is alif lam m uh, mim. Alif doesn't have uh, this symbol, so it's only short. Alif, so it has no fatah, no kasrah, and no dhamma. So it is, it is called alif. That's why it has no transliteration in Latin. You cannot say a uh, or a. Uh. No, it's completely different. So it's this say alif, alif la. Actually, this is this is uh, there's tasdid right over here actually. Alif la mim. See, that's the way how you read this. Alif lam mim. Okay, it's a uh, six six uh, harakat six long. And then we have the other one is. Uh, see, this is now. Let me show you this one. This is uh, two symbols, and this you need to off between one of these two. You can stop here or you can stop here. Well. I personally prefer to stop here. Okay, for example, um, hold on. Oh, it's, I think it's quite too big. Okay. I get uh, a little bit small. Okay, now this one is better for you to read that. That, okay. Alif Lamim, Valikal Kitabula Roy Bafi. I actually never hear any Muslim reading after this one. For example, Zalikal Kitabula Roy. No. Actually, I stop here. Valikal Kitabula Roy Bafi. Udalil Mut. Okay, so the translation is, this is the book, there's no doubt about it, a guide for those mindful of Allah, so mindful, you, you it's, uh, the, the meaning of God in Islam is actually, it's not a physical being, it's, it says this, Mukhalafatul Hawadis, it means that this is better, and way better and higher and the greatest than anything on earth, in the universe, he's just there. Um, and, and it's very close, even and even Allah SWT is very close, closer to us than our vein, our blood. Okay, that's the, the concept of God in Islam. It's our heat. Uh, for those people who do not understand that, please, please learn, please read, and please understand before you judge. Okay, mm, that's the way how to read that. Um, now I stop share here. Now it's uh, coming back. <laughs> All right. So I hopefully that it is useful for you if you want to read the Quran. Um, it's not just for Muslims, for everyone who wants to know about the Quran, how to read that. It is very, very useful for you to learn. And if there's a little mistakes or something that you might add, if you are Islamic scholars, please do so. Please comment in, in the comment section below. I'm very pleased to read and discuss with you. Okay. Uh, all right. I hope that uh, what I'm doing here in this video will be another uh, merit for me from Allah SWT. And if there is something bad or wrong that I just said in this video, that's the weakness of mine as a human being. I'm still learning. And hopefully for those of you who just knew, who were just new to Islam and you uh, being the mu'allaf or convert to Islam, I hope and pray for you that you find ease and you find a peacefulness in your life that that believing believing to God in Islam means that it is only between you and God alone, no partners, no anything. We have two things in Islam, hablum in Allah and hablum in Anas. So if you're good to Allah, you obey um, your faith to Allah, and then you have good connection with human beings, whether it is Muslim or non-Muslims or everyone 
in the world, on earth, that is actually the meaning of Islam. Mukhtarin or Muqsin. It's not just uh, making friends with the Islam religion, but also to people of other religion, with the Christianity or, or with many other people, even the face, making friends, but in the sense that we share uh, the values. And if you come to the uh, believing other things rather than Allah, then you actually step out of this uh, Islam. Okay, hopefully that uh, this, this video this video is very useful for you. This there is no editing in this video. I just speak out and record this and just the way it is. Okay, have many may God bless you all. I mean, I mean, Yarabal Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a good day.